This is um, this is one of the things that um, dumbfounds me. Um, I personally feel incredibly privileged uh, to be born in a small village in Bangladesh and growing up in a rural community. Um, trying to understand how do you how do we take people like Kissinger? How do we like your essay? Uh, the the roles of intellectuals have shaped the perception or the of many many people who want to you know join in resistance. Kissinger was a professor at Harvard University, um, and when I think about like you just have mentioned that the slavery, the cotton was the oil at that time. I taught economics for almost 20 years, and I think about it is that when I was teaching economics in high school to my students, um, I was teaching uh, that the, the British curriculum, of course, is at the advantage of you know, uh, uh, market economy, all the good things, the structural adjustment policies bringing. And you see Nobel Prize winning economists like Milton Friedman uh, saying that the progress, the economic progress of America had nothing to do with, you know, slavery. It had nothing to do with, you know, brutal exploitation of, you know, co colonialism. Instead, um, uh, sort of like colonialism has done favor to parts of the world that was stagnant. If I'm like, we grew up reading scholars like Martin, uh, Milton Friedman, or particularly Karl Marx. Uh, help us giving us some guideline that how do we approach this intellectual giants established in academic circles like Kissinger, a murderer, <laughs> I know an architect of genocide. We read people like Milton Friedman. How do we approach these intellectual giants and look at them critically, not accepting what they're just saying in a for its face value? Well, first of all, we should I'll be careful about the phrase intellectual giant. I'll tell you an anecdote. Uh, in the 1960s, before Kissinger had risen to great heights, he was a professor at Harvard teaching uh, foreign policy, international affairs. I was teaching undergraduate courses at MIT, right down the river from Harvard. Uh, courses on uh, American history, international affairs, and so on, things I write about. I tried to use Kissinger's academic essays, not the ones he's famous for, the academic essays on American history. The students, the undergraduate students at MIT were rolling in the aisles. They couldn't believe the stupidity of what he was writing. I had to stop using it. I'll give you the lead example. Uh, this is the great professor at Harvard. One of his articles, you can look it up in his book uh, on American foreign policy some, back in the 1960s. He has an article called The Statesman and the Prophet. And what he argues is he's trying to look very deeply intellectual and so on. So he says the real problems of the world are not war and genocide and famine. Those are superficial problems. The real problem, he says, is a divide between the West and everyone else. The West underwent the Newtonian revolution and understands that there's a world independent of the person. The rest of the world hasn't understood this yet. So the Viet we are trying to send a message to the Vietnamese. We bomb them and bomb them and tell them to, to let us take over, but they don't understand. They probably think it's a headache. You know? They don't know that uh, there's a world out there separate from them. You can't ask MIT students to read this. And they don't even think it's a comic strip. It's impossible. You have to be really brainwashed deeply to be able to read this and not break out in uh, laughter and ridicule. Now, the intellectual level is nothing very much. We're talking about very mediocre individuals who do understand power and know how to 
to serve power and to work for it. Uh, Kissinger understands very well. Uh, he once made a statement about a comment about uh, what he called what are called policy intellectuals, the intellectuals who make it into the centers of power and give advice and so on. He said their role is to uh, translate the wishes of the powerful into actual policy. That's it. We're the servants who take the who serve the powerful. We pol we shine their shoes and we take what they tell us and we turn it into something that can be applied. So if Nixon wants to bomb Cambodia, I send the order saying anything that flies against anything that moves. If Nixon wants to make a breakthrough with China and make it exciting, I decide to murder huge numbers of people in Bangladesh because that's what's important. 